Welcome to this episode of Pit Talk TV. It's a very special episode. It's a fun episode. It's about the Rockford Speedway's Night of Thrills. We've got so much stuff going on tonight. I'll try and list a little bit. We've got the Venus flytrap, where a car is going to come out of the X with a trailer and try and hit the van and get and drop the car down onto the trailer. We've got the Tower of Wow. We've got skid cars. We've got we've got soccer where they're going to play cars kicking a 1500 pounds steel ball around and playing soccer. Uh, <laughs> we've got the meltdown tonight. Um, we've got tribute to Doug Rose and the Green Mamba Jet tonight. Um, we've got the Sixers championship tonight. There's just so much stuff going on here at the Rockford Speedway. It's an honor to get to share that with you. And hey, let's head down to the pits and see what's going on down there. All right. All right, we've made our way over to a very interesting pit. I'm standing with a, a monster truck called Mechanical Mischief. I'm with the pilot, Jim Burns. And Jim's come to the Rockford Speedway tonight to be part of the Night of Thrills. So Jim, Tell us, number one, where are you from? Rockford, Illinois. I'm about 15 minutes away from the track here, so it's great to be doing a show close to home. How many, uh, how many days a year are you out on the road? Um, I run somewhat of a limited schedule. I do probably 20 events a year, and uh, that's enough for me. I work a full-time job 40, 50, 60 hours a week, so this is uh, supplementary income. So you're chief cook and bottle wash, so you're probably your own mechanic and uh, your own repair guy and uh, your own pit crew and, and all that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, so tell us a little bit, something that, um, that, that people that only see these on TV wouldn't know anything about. And I'm pounding on this, and I didn't know. That's fiberglass. I had no idea. So tell us something that, uh, that folks don't, wouldn't know about a monster truck, something interesting that, uh, that you find uh, super fascinating. Um, I mean, yeah, that is one of the things, a fiberglass body, a replica. This is a replica of a 2001 Chevy Silverado. Uh, the whole body weighs probably 500 pounds, if that, you know. Um, what else? Interesting. Uh, the engine, of course, typically in your uh, normal daily driver car or truck, your engine would be in the front. 90% um, of monster trucks run an engine in the rear. Uh, just better weight distribution and balance that way. and. Uh, actually a little bit better vision for the driver since we can see through the front uh, we've got Lexan firewall in the front here so that helps with vision uh, the engine itself in this truck is a 496 uh, big block Chevy aluminum headed motor uh, 871 supercharger runs on uh, methanol alcohol oh okay it produces wow. uh, roughly 1300 horsepower well you got to have some horsepower to get them wheel stands going and everything so there's no doors. I don't see a ladder. So where do you get in this at? Uh, the driver's side, actually. There's a cutout underneath the body. This side, obviously, is blocked. But the other side, we climb up from underneath. There's room between the, the body and the, and the frame to climb in. That is so cool. These tires, um, now, these aren't the tires that you have on it when you go to put it in the trailer. Uh, you've got to put a smaller tire on it. So. When you go to put this on, tell me a little bit about this tire. One thing we found out that the air pressure isn't what you would think it would be. Right. No, nope. the tire pressure we run in these is right around 16 to 18 PSI. Um, the tire itself weighs about 650 pounds with the rim. Uh, so, yeah, you don't want to tip it over too much. You want to keep it upright. Otherwise, right. you, you need to find a helper to get it back upright. So um, why, why, why run such a uh, small air pressure? Is that to, uh, to soften the tire a little bit so that you get your grip and, and more maneuverability uh, uh, when you're heading for the cars and things like right, that? Right, right. Yeah, I mean, that's probably about the typical pressure uh, that these tires would run on a uh, farm implement. That's what they come oh, off okay. of. They come off of an old... Uh, Interrogator or floater spreaders that go out in the farm fields and spread either liquid or dry fertilizer. So these tires kind of float on the ground and uh, won't destroy the, the crops and tear up the dirt. So that's what they were originally designed for. One thing I do see about the tread, it looks like they're ground or, or, or they're, they're knifed. Uh, do you do that? Is that what you do? Uh, 
You, you put an edge on them? Yeah, well, a lot of guys do, and uh, I do sometimes. These tires are right off the machine the way they came off the machine. They wear like this uh, because of air pressure that's wrong or uh, running on different roads. It just wears them this way. The, the center obviously isn't getting anywhere. It's just out here. Oh, so okay. That's, right. I haven't touched these with a knife or, or groover or anything. That's okay. just the way they wear. Cool. Automatic or manual? Uh, transmission is an automatic. It's a turbo 400. Uh, it is manually shifted, but it is, is an automatic transmission. You just select your gear manually with your shifter, no clutch or anything. I would say you're not messing with a clutch right, in there and right. everything. Yeah, that'd so. be pretty difficult to find. So what's it feel like when you hit that first set of cars and and you get all that air and you know uh, when you're first starting out and the cars haven't been squished down at all and so that first guy out's getting a lot of air what's that feel like oh it's a good feeling yeah the first hit out is is usually a pretty good one um your nerves are up a little bit just because you know that's your first hit of the night usually and uh yeah you're always looking for a good hit right off the f the first one's always going to be good because that car is good and solid but uh it's a very difficult feeling to describe. Um, I suppose it feels like a roller coaster when you uh, click, click, click up the yep. up the hill, and yep. then you get the first feel of that so I, going I, over the top. You're an adrenaline junkie. Yeah. 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 yeah I suppose. So. Let me ask. I've seen them on TV. We've all seen them. Have you done a backflip in one of these? I have not purposely done a backflip. No. Um, <laughs> I've hit stuff and ended up going up and over backwards, but never a complete backflip. Um, is that the risk it, reward for doing it, doing a backflip is it's a little difficult for me to, to swallow. Yeah. Uh, if it goes bad, you're looking at thousands of dollars in repair. Okay. Um, okay. If it does land it, then you're a hero. You're the hero. <laughs> right. So yeah, that's how either you do it or you don't. So, well, we're looking forward to uh, the show last, last year was awesome. And the fans just, uh, I have a, a unique opportunity of being down on the field, uh, taking pictures and I get to hear that crowd where you don't get to hear them so much because of the, the motor and everything but i get to hear that crowd when you hit those cars for the first time mm -hmm. that crowd goes ape and they just uh they're standing on their feet they're cheering and i'm sure you see it but all the flashes are going off and everything and it's really cool so uh, welcome back to the rockford speedway we're glad you're here tonight and uh, we're looking for a, a fun time all right mechanical mischief everybody All right. Hey, this is this is really special for Kyle and I to be down here. Uh, we're with Fred Shibley, and Fred has brought the Little Red uh, beer hauler truck to the Rockford Speedway tonight. Fred, tell me a little bit about w what your show is. Well, I do the car burning show, and uh, I've been doing this since 1955. We started doing it when I worked with Joey Chitwood. And then I, at that time, I was working with Walt Arfons in art. Jo, uh, Joey Chitwood, that was the Chitwood um, uh, stunt, show. the thrill show, the stunt drivers. Oh, right. Yes. And then, of course, Art Alphonse owned the Green Mamba. Right. right. No, or built he, the Green he Mamba. He owned the Green Monster. The Green Monster, yes. Okay. So then a uh, picture of the US-1 was built for Bonneville, and I bought that car after Roger Harris got killed at Iceland Speedway in New York. And Art Malone owned the car then, and I bought the car from Art. And I rebuilt the US-1. Then I, at the same time, I was working for Walt Arvons and building the funny car. Jet, first jet funny car there ever was was that 67 Barracuda. So you built the very first jet Powered funny car. Powered ever was. Now, where do you build all this stuff at? In my shop in Elkhart, Indiana. Okay. I got a 68 by 80 building. You can put one car in at a time. The rest of it's full of airplane parts. So your nickname is Airplane? Airplane Freddy, because all the cars I build have aircraft engines. I build golf carts with jet engines in them, build motorcycles with jet engines, and I even build lawn tractors for lawn tractor pulling with turbine engines in them. That's awesome. So what are the fans going to see tonight when you bring the little red truck out? Well, I'm going to barbecue a couple cars or a van they got for me. They're filling it full of stuff, and I'm just going to burn it to the ground. 
about how long does it take and, and what, what kind of what kind of fuel mileage do you get on this thing? Well, it gets about uh, 140 gallons to five minutes. And what do you run in it, jet fuel or diesel, or what do you run? I run kerosene and unleaded gas because this engine doesn't like biodiesel because the jet engine has no compression when you go to start it. And a diesel engine has compression heat uh -huh. to make the fuel light. But a jet engine, kerosene, and I gas started with straight gasoline. I got a bottle that I fill with gas, and then as I spin the engine up, the pump, fuel pumps on the jet engine pressurize the gas bottle. So the first thing the spark plugs see is gasoline. That starts to fire. I see. And then the starter will pull the engine up to 3,000 RPM. And then it'll run on its own. So I saw some of the stats on your card. What, uh, tell us what the horsepower is on this. What you would plan on using tonight? About 12,000 horsepower. 12,000 horsepower. <laughs> Take just a few minutes to barbecue down a couple of cars. And uh, when, I say, when we say barbecue them down, you mean melt them down into a little puddle. Well, that's what happened over at Wisconsin International. The engines all melted and fell on the ground. That's awesome. So what does it feel like uh, to be the pilot? So just sitting there, you know, giving it the, the, the gas and, and giving it all the commands and, and knowing what's going on behind you. What's that feel like? Well, sometimes it's a little scary because I have cut the chains in half and the car goes one way and the truck goes the other way. And uh, when this happens, it will accelerate. I have actually drag raced this truck. It'll run 221 miles an hour in six seconds. That um, is probably a little faster than you would go around the Rockford Speedway here, I would say, <laughs> at uh, this little quarter mile. Well, let me just say it is a pleasure to, to uh, visit with you and, and meet you and uh, hear a little bit about your truck. And I look forward to uh, seeing your show tonight. Thanks for being on Pit Talk TV with me and Kyle. And uh, so there you have it from the pits with the little red truck and Fred.